Okay, some more on asymmetric encryption, in particular how to use it, what you can use it for, and how uh, to get that uh, function out of it. So, um, with asymmetric cryptography, again, we've got a key pair. When the key pair is created, when one key is used to encrypt data, message, clear text, whatever you want to say, um, the only key that can decrypt that material is the other key. And, you know, that works either way. So, if you want confidentiality, if you want to protect it, if you want to send a message to somebody and know that nobody else in the world can read that message, you encrypt with the receiver's public key. Now, how do you know the receiver's public key? Well, it's public. Anybody can know it. Anybody can have, can know, can record, can store, can attest to the receiver's public key because it's public. The thing is that when you encrypt material with the public key, the only key, the only key in the world that will decrypt that material is the private key. So that's how you maintain confidentiality. You encrypt with the public key knowing that the receiver is the only person in the world who has the key, the private key, his private key. That's the only key that will decrypt that material. Nobody else gets access to it. That's how the system works. Only the receiver has the private key. And that should be the way that you work it. There, there shouldn't be sort of issues of, of key escrow and, and that sort of thing involved. If there is, eh, you got to start protecting things. So, um, if you want integrity, authentication, um, and uh, also, in this case, non-repudiation. Um, you encrypt then with the senders your private key. Now, you are the only person in the world who knows your private key. When, but the material, the, the message, whatever, can be opened, can be decrypted with your public key. And of course, your public key is public. So this is not providing us with confidentiality. But it is providing us with authentication, with integrity, with uh, you know, verification, and for the first time, non-repudiation. So uh, let's go back to our court case. You know, I... I ordered the 10,000 widgets and, and then, uh, you know, came up with a message that said, uh, you know, I didn't order the 10,000 widgets and, and, you know, fighting the case in court. And before, when it was a symmetric key, you said, well, you know, it was encrypted. And I said, yes, but it was encrypted with a key that we shared. So you could fraudulently claim that I sent this message ordering the 10,000 widgets. Now with asymmetric encryption if my public key will decrypt 
that message, that order for 10,000 widgets, the only key that could have created that message is my private key. I'm stuck. I'm on the hook. Nobody can... You know, I, I cannot any longer claim that I sent a different message, that you must have you know, done something because you don't have my private key. You could not have created and encrypted that message. Well, you could have created, but you couldn't have encrypted that message without access to my private key, and it's private. Nobody else knows it. That's how it works. So we have those uh, uh, functions going on. Now, um, if you want both confidentiality and authentication, you encrypt with first with the sender's private key. You're, you use your private key to encrypt the message. That's that's what gives you the authentication, of course. Um, and then you encrypt with the receiver's public key, the person that you're sending to. You, you use their public key. That gives you the confidentiality. Why do you do it in that order? Because the confident the uh, fact that you have done encryption to provide for authentication is hidden. It's, it's wrapped by the fact that you do the encryption with the send uh, the receiver's public key as the second part of the process. So you've you've covered, you've hidden what you have done uh, by wrapping it in the confidentiality, and that's you know the the better way to ensure. Uh, that what you have done is is protected. So, and next time we're going to go on to digital signatures.